These days, it seems that every time you turn around, you hear news of yet another lake that's been declared ecologically dead because of acid rain or pollution caused by development. The Soil and Water Conservation Society of Metro Halifax has a keen interest in the state of the lakes in the area. Over the last few months, they've been conducting tests on the levels of pollution. Shalom Mandeville is with the society, and he joins us with a report card. Good afternoon, Shalom. Shalom, what seems to be the biggest threat to the lakes in the metropolitan area of Halifax, Dartmouth? Okay, it's known as the trophic state, Chris. Trophic means biological health. Mm -hmm. And um, it more or less tells you um, how long the lake will be clean, mm -hmm. you know, without algal growth. For example, if you go to Russell um, or even Cranberry, you can see awful lot of blue-green algal growth and they smell like rotten egg odor mm -hmm. and all that. And, then, and in many lakes like Oat Hill, you can see quite a few macrophytes. That means... Um, things like cattails and bulrushes mm -hmm. around, and those are very, very poor signs. And what is causing these things to happen? Is this something as a result of, uh, of uh, ecological, naturally ecological things happening, or is this because of the acid rain that we're getting and the industrial uh -huh. pollutants that are getting into the, into the water? Well, in our metro area, it's, uh, it's mainly because what they call as non-point so sources of pollution. That means... Uh, Mainly it comes from leaves, you know, the leaves leach a lot of phosphorus mm -hmm. and um, I guess animal feces and fertilizers, automobile traffic, oils, mm -hmm. the, it's, it's a very little bit, but they all add up. Mm -hmm. well, and, and of course Dartmouth being called the city of lakes, yeah. we, are, we do have lakes in the midst of a metropolitan area that's where right. you are we're subject to things like that that are probably almost beyond our control. Well, that's expected, but uh, there are things we could be doing too. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in Orlando, Florida, uh, there's a lake right in the center known as Lake Eola. Mm -hmm. And uh, that lake is a very small lake, and, uh, and they've restored it through biological means. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, here, we don't have um, kind of a provincial federal initiatives mm -hmm. to help the lakes. Um, going back to the U.S., 50% uh, of the costs are paid by the federal government there. Mm -hmm. And here we don't have things like that. Well, I want to get to that. Won't cover it. I want to get to that in, in a few moments, but first of all, before we run out of time, I wanted to know, you talked with us in October about mm -hmm. the kinds of tests that you were going to do. Uh, what, what did you do? You conducted tests in October and up until Christmas, did you? Well, no, we did the three seasons, the spring, mm -hmm. when the lakes turn over, mm -hmm. usually, you know, the deeper lakes. Then we did summer when you get the maximum growth, mm -hmm. and then fall. Then we average them for 1990. What did you find? Um, not surprising. The only thing surprising to me personally was Morris Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, most of that is in Cole Harbor, and that's showing signs of going down. And I'm, as you know, I'm very annoyed about that because Morris is a beautiful lake, and only a, um, about 30% of the watershed is developed. Mm -hmm. It should not show those signs. So what is wrong with Morris Lake then? Well, why, are, why is it showing those signs? Well, if, you if see, Russell, which has been talking common terms, uh, it's a swamp. Mm -hmm. And it uh, flushes or drains into Morris every eight months. Mm -hmm. That's where the major pollution comes from. Now, you say that... Uh, uh, well, you told me last October, I guess, that first lake in Sackville was, con was declared ecologically dead. Now, how long ago was that lake declared dead, and why was it declared dead? Well, when we declared dead, we were meaning from the point of view of trout, mm -hmm. uh, natural trout as opposed to what they call put-and-take fishery. Mm -hmm. See, put-and-take um, means the, the province comes in the spring mm -hmm. and stocks the lakes with uh, uh, earlings, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't survive more than two, three months. Mm -hmm. So that has no significance with respect to the health of the lakes. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the lake can't support life on its own. Yeah. Well, just to give you an example, it's just like you putting a bunch of fish in a bucket and uh, picking them out again. Mm -hmm. you know, it has no ecological significance. Has anything been done, uh, Shalom, to, to reverse the, the, the reverse the process at uh, First Lake in Sackville? No, I, have, um, I met the minister a few months ago and uh, no, because just to be fair, as you know, we are through a poor economic situation mm -hmm. and probably this is not the right time. Uh, we are very practical in that. Mm -hmm. But we at least want a statement made saying that we are going to start looking into it. Mm -hmm. That's all we are asking for. Now, as I mentioned, you're, you're with the, uh, the Soil and Water Conservation okay. Society of Metropolitan Halifax. Uh, you, you, you've you been out testing the lakes. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering, who makes up your society? Are you a, uh, do you have any clout with the government? Can you make recommendations well, that they will listen to? Well, the society started because the scientists who are specialists in lakes, known as limnologists, mm -hmm. were willing to back our work. If not, I wouldn't have started that in mm -hmm. December 89. Mm -hmm. So 
I'm very proud to say that all limnologists of any significance belong to the society and several professional engineers and planners and mm -hmm. biologists. We have got over 22 biologists and so and then we have people from other walks of life too. Mm -hmm. So it's a microcosm and it's open to anybody to participate. Once, uh, once you begin the testing process, how long does it take? How long does it take when you say you go out in the, in the four different seasons yeah. and, and, and do some tests? Is it a long process? Well, or is it just a matter of taking water samples back to a laboratory? Well, the, um, the part of the volunteers is very small. Mm -hmm. It's almost next to nothing. But the analysis takes quite a while, yes. Mm -hmm. First, you got the chemical analysis done at tons in Halifax and the path lab, and then you've got to interpret those results. Mm -hmm. That's where most of the work is. Mm -hmm. Now, like I, like I asked you a minute ago, once your group has ascertained what the problems in the lakes are, can you take them, can you take them to government? Well, they already have them. Um, in addition to that, we are doing a uh, very, actually very scientific paper, research paper, mm -hmm. in conjunction with the federal. And there's going to be a glossy coming out of it maybe in a year's time or two years. It'll be called the State of Metro Lakes, mm -hmm. you know. So hopefully something will happen. Somebody will hopefully listen to what you have to say. Well, uh, see, that a glossy pamphlet will be circulated to anybody. Mm -hmm. So, Well, you mentioned a minute ago that anybody who would like to get involved with the Soil sure. and Water Conservation Society is welcome. Do you have to be a scientist in order to, no. to volunteer? No. No. What, who, who, what kind of person well, are you looking I for? Well, I, may, I want to make one thing clear. We don't go and oppose developments. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have got quite a few developers among us. Not because of that. We want to stay scientific and technical. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's willing to listen and participate in a, you know, in a, in a cooperative fashion mm -hmm. are welcome to get involved. Well, I'm going to give them your phone number then sure. so they can give you a call. Thanks. Okay, Shalom Mandeville, of course, is with the Soil and Water Conservation Society of Metro Halifax. For more information, you can call 463-7777, uh, a very easy phone number to remember. Sure. Shalom, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, continued uh, luck with your testing. Well, it's been a great pleasure to be on your show a few times. Thank Chris. you. Shalom Mandeville is with the Soil and Water Conservation Society of Metro Halifax.